Hi, I'm Sergio Cabanas, attorney at law here in Florida. Thank you for joining me today. We've developed a series of videos to help address important, relevant legal topics and issues that might be affecting the lives of our clients during this coronavirus pandemic. So today's topic for this video is Sergio. My spouse and I are planning to divorce. However, we have a lot of debts and we were also thinking about bankruptcy. Which is better to do? To file the bankruptcy before or after the divorce? Well, this is a very difficult and complicated question, but I wanted to give you an overview to give you a general idea of how the law works here for divorce and bankruptcy. I've designed this chart here to help kind of explain this complicated issue. So let's suppose we're dealing with a scenario where we're here before the divorce or bankruptcy is filed. This line signifies when the divorce would actually be filed, in which case the divorce process will be underway until there's a final judgment for the divorce here. And then after that, it's the post-divorce stage. So let's think about a situation where the spouses cannot agree on whether or not to file the bankruptcy before the divorce is filed. In this scenario, we have the wife and the husband here. The wife may have her own debt, which is marked by these post-its. Let's suppose this represents uh, credit card debts, uh, car loan, and other personal loans that only the wife is responsible for. Down here, we have the husband having his own debts for, say, a personal debts, his own credit cards. And here, let's suppose we have joint debts where both the husband and wife are liable for, such as a mortgage, car loans, etc., where they're both uh, in, in liable for that debt. Well, what happens here is that if neither spouse files a bankruptcy, then they go through the divorce process and the divorce laws would apply after the divorce is filed. And as a general rule, what happens in divorce court is that all assets and all debts are subject to equitable distribution if acquired during the marriage. Equitable distribution pretty much means that we gather all the assets and all the debts, all the good and the bad and the ugly, is put together and divided up between the husband and wife. And once the, the final judgment for the divorce is entered, the wife has responsibility for half the debts and the husband has responsibility for his half of the debts. Now, either spouse can file the, the, the bankruptcy after the divorce to discharge whatever debts they ended up getting stuck with. Okay, so now we back up and we consider another scenario where one of the spouses files the bankruptcy without the other. And it is possible for one spouse or the other to file bankruptcy without the other. Well, what would happen? Say the wife files the bankruptcy without the husband. Well, in the bankruptcy, let's assume she is able to eliminate all of these debts. It is possible for her to even get rid of any responsibility she has for the joint debts. So that means that the husband stuck with all this debt. Now, after the bankruptcy, then the divorce is filed, and remember the general rule will still apply nonetheless, which means that all the assets and all the debts by either spouse is subject to equitable distribution if acquired during the marriage. So that means that all these debts that were acquired here and that the husband still stuck with go through the divorce process and they're divided up equally. Now, remember, the wife has already filed the bankruptcy and the husband has not. So the husband can still file a bankruptcy, but the wife is still stuck with this debt. So that's not a very good scenario. So what's best to do is to have all of these debts prior to the divorce. And if both spouses agree, they can file the bankruptcy before the divorce process and we get rid of all this debt so that when we commence the divorce process, all the assets but the debts are gone. But whatever debts is left over, say after a joint bankruptcy is filed, that's subject to equitable distribution if acquired during the marriage. So that means that whatever little debts or no debts are left and the assets are then distributed to the parties. If they cannot agree to file a bankruptcy together or they just can't for whatever reason, then it's best to wait until after the divorce is filed to see what debts you're left with to consider a bankruptcy depending on your circumstances. So that's a general idea of how the divorce and bankruptcy laws work in conjunction with one another depending on your circumstances. Again, this is a complicated area because we're merging two practice areas, divorce laws and bankruptcy, into one to maximize the benefit for you and or possibly your spouse. But there's a lot of other considerations that come into play. For example, what debts are marital 
and subject to equitable distribution in a divorce and what debts are not uh, marital. Also, we consider whether or not one or both spouses could be eligible to file a bankruptcy and if so, the kind of bankruptcy that can be filed. And on and on. There are many different considerations. The important issue to understand is that now more than ever, it's best to consult with an attorney here before the divorce or bankruptcy is filed to find out how the laws will apply to the specifics of your case and thereby maximize the greatest benefit from both the divorce and the bankruptcy together. So we now provide telephone consultations and video conferencing from the safety and comfort of your home. So if you need help with this important project or any other legal hardship you may be experiencing, please just give us a call, 954-447-2580. Again, that number is 954-447-2580. Thank you again for tuning in and joining me today. Please stay safe and have faith.